YouTube, Dow here from Zephyr Games, and today, as it is Valentine's Day, I thought I'd bring you a different type of video, and I'm going to bring you my top five things that I love about Yu-Gi-Oh. I also put the question out to you guys as well, so I will read out all of your comments in regards to what you particularly love about the game and Yu-Gi-Oh as a whole. Now, my top five are pretty much solely revolved around the card game, because nine to that ten, you've probably gone from the anime to the card game uh, and adapted from there. So anything about voice actors and everything like that, as much as I love it, I've not really considered it in my top five for now. So, with all that out of the way, if you like this different kind of video, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more upcoming content from the channel. We do have the release of the Ice Barrier Structure Deck coming out next week, which does mean we will have an opening plus a budget profile for it as well. With all that out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into today's top five things that I love about Yu-Gi-Oh! Starting off at number five, we are going to be going with product. Now, in regards to the product, what I mean by that is everything inclusive with it. So new product introduces us to new decks, introduces us to new artwork, uh, and that is very relevant for the rest of the list as well. But the one thing that product does specifically itself is there is no better feeling, in my opinion, probably coming close to winning a big event, which very few players actually get the, the ability, uh, like have the feeling to do so, is pulling a high rare card or a card that you are desperate for. So for example, if you pull a Starlight Rare right now, the feeling you have just naturally, I don't think there's anyone alive that pulls a Starlight Rare and doesn't get excited. I mean, it's just as it is. The further down the totem pole it goes, or the further down the type of player you are, um, that feeling will be reminisced with what you are looking for specifically or what you pull. So for example, a brand new younger player that has watched the anime, if they pull a pack and they pull a Dark Magician, a Blue Eyes, or even an Egyptian God card, they're going to be just as excited as an individual like myself if I pull a Starlight Rare or if I pull a Ghost Dark Magician Rare in Ghost of the Past. Fingers crossed. So at number five, of course, we are looking at products specifically. Uh, obviously, like I said, new products, new decks, uh, keep re-envisioning the game, keep providing new tactics, new strategies, new colours, new artworks, new type of mechanics, keeps the game fresh, keeps the game moving. Uh, and without product, we don't really have a game to fall back on. And you look at all the other card games as well, they constantly keep releasing product, but sometimes product is so bad that it makes you lose interest. Whereas I think with Yu-Gi-Oh, the one bright thing about this is it will always, if a product is bad, it won't be bad for everyone. So taking into account the ice barriers coming up, now, the Ice Barriers are not going to appeal to everyone. They're not going to be the meta structure deck on the same level that Shadows were or the same level that um, Salaman Greats were. But it will appeal to those that used to build Ice Barriers that still build Ice Barriers. Or like me, it's just a fan of that kick-ass Trish Dragon. Like, that new dra uh, Trish Dragon looks unreal. Moving on to number four. Now, this one we're going to go with duels. Now, the actual physical play of duels, whether it be online, whether it be remote duel, or whether it be in person, but just dueling in general, both winning, losing, and, of course, learning as you go. Now, obviously, there are going to be some sour feelings to it because, I mean, I'm exactly like you. If I face a VFD, I've got no way to out it, and I'm sitting there going, yeah, cool. That's not fun. But when I'm playing the game with friends, when I'm playing the duel in general, when I'm learning the game and playing it myself... Uh, whether it be test hands, whether it be just watching duels online, whether it be learning strategies, everything like that, the general duel and the whole concept of the game, graveyards, spells, traps, monsters, extra deck, all of that I think is really unique in a census and the way it works. And you look at other card games like Digimon and Dragon Ball and Magic the Gathering, they all have different styles. Obviously they've got like mana, they've got a dice counter for life points, we've got life points. I think the uniqueness about Yu-Gi-Oh! is, apart from obviously deck and graveyard, Everything else has a kind of unique feel to it. So, I mean, we don't have leaders like Magic, which I think is great. Technically, we are the leaders, which I think is one thing that makes it a little bit more unique. Is where it's like, okay, okay, uh, with Dragon Ball, I'm going to attack your leader and take away your life. Whereas this, it's like, I'm actually going to attack you. It makes it a bit more personal. It's like, no, I don't want you to attack me. I want my monsters to protect me. Uh, you've then got, of course, combos. Now, again, unlike Dragon Ball and, and again, like, like Digimon as well, you do have certain combos, but because they play with a mana-based system, there's only so far the combos can go. Whereas with stuff like Yu-Gi-Oh as well, 
the synergy doesn't come from like um, mana or built up energy that you have. It actually comes from the ability of synergizing two cards together uh, and just being able to play further forward that way. And being able to pull off certain combos in duels, winning duels, and especially, most importantly, even losing duels is incredibly important because as long as you learn from your mistakes, whether you learn from a misplay you made, whether you learn because it's the first time you're facing a deck that is brand new to the meta, or anything like that, you're able to adapt your playstyle, you're able to practice, you're able to improve as a player yourself, and you're able to generally get better and do your research building up. So duels and the general gameplay of the game is what makes it so good and is what I love about it. Now moving on to number three, this one kind of filters off of um, the product and of course duels itself, and we've gone with artwork and the story behind the cards. Now the reason I rate this in the middle of the pack is purely because um, with the story and with the artwork, even if you're not a Yu-Gi-Oh player, you can still appreciate the artwork. Like for me, personally, I appreciate the Dragon Ball artwork and I appreciate Magic the Gathering artwork, what, especially when you look at like the, uh, the Godzilla artworks like they did for Magic. That, that was unreal. Like I absolutely love them. But when you look at uh, Yu-Gi-Oh itself, whether it is an iconic piece of artwork like Dark Magician or Blue Eyes, whether it is a pencil looking drawing like the Tenies, whether it's just something dark, creepy, realistic that is uh, relevant to pop culture, stuff like the Mutants, all the different artwork is absolutely lovely. And then even if it's just something kooky and crazy that you're like, how the hell has someone thought of that and put it together? Like Ojama Pink and the rest of the Ojama family. I think the artwork itself is incredibly beautiful. Um, even the signed artworks, when they the, like the specific jump promo ones and, and all the promo ones that will be put appearing up here, uh, all the different variations of red eyes and blue eyes, there are some that you're like, nah, I'm not a fan of that one. But at the end of the day, the artwork for every single card is always quite stunning. And then off the back of the artwork of the character itself, you also have the background, which is why I think the one big disadvantage that Yu-Gi-Oh has compared to everywhere else is the ability of full arts. Now, this leads in quite nicely to the rest of the stuff we'll get on later, but the creativity that comes from the back of that with people making their own full arts of, um, of Yu-Gi-Oh cards again just looks absolutely stunning, looks absolutely beautiful. And coming off with the artwork, you've also got Ultimate Res as well, which kind of leads into like the types of rarities on cards, which I suppose is something else that we'll get to in an honourable mention section a little bit later on. Now coming off the back of the artworks, what again makes them really, really cool, and you have heard me mention it before, and even other people have mentioned it as well previously, is sometimes they just build a deck because they like the way the artwork is, or they like the story behind it. So alongside artwork, it's generally the story or the lore behind the cards, and I think that's what gives the cards more of a meaning. So when you look at like the World Legacy law, for example, or when you look at stuff like the Unchained law, everything like that brings more life to the cards, brings more life to the games, and you just absolutely love it to kind of see, ah, oh, so if I put these cards in this particular order, I'm not going to get an effect on the board, but I'm going to actually be able to watch a story transition in front of my eyes. Um, and I, I think the one big thing that Konami are, are, is a positive for and a negative for is they have provided that uh, the backstories and, and for certain law cards there is that book you can get in the OCG which basically goes through specific laws um, with the world legacy being a very very specific one as well and you've got dual terminal uh, you've also got like dual avatars uh, dark ruler within uh, uh, sorry the dark ruler hadas other kind of uh, art types like that and laws behind it and it kind of makes you whether you actually want to play the deck or not, you kind of want to build the deck for the lore and the story behind it and the artwork. And I think all of that intertwines. Uh, and the one big thing that the artwork has, which is why I love it so much, is, like I said, it appeals to everyone outside the game as well. Now, you might not find a Magic or a Dark Magician or another card game player that will actually admit this. But when they look at certain Yu-Gi-Oh cards, they'll probably go, yeah, that looks pretty badass. Don't get me wrong, there are some artworks that I'm kind of like, eh, it's a little bit lazy. But then there are artworks where you look at it and you go, this is stunning. Like, people get tattoos of some of the uh, of Yu-Gi-Oh artwork. Like, I mean, that kind of says it all. If you're prepared to get a permanent marking on your body of a particular artwork, that shows true dedication and love. Moving on to number two. Now, number two is higher up the list because it, it predecesses everything else. It probably doesn't predecess the artwork, but in general, what it does is it allows you to explore a little bit more, and that is deck building. Now, you deck build to duel. You sometimes use artwork to distinguish what you're going to build, but the one thing that deck building allows you to do is it allows you to be creative, it allows you to learn kind of aspects of the game, it allows you to be testing. Like I've shown you before in some of my previous test videos, that I'll put 60 cards together, test around with it, and just start cutting cards out, just to see how it works, see how it utilizes. Um, and there is no pre-written recipe in Yu-Gi-Oh decks. Like yes, you'll get a structure deck, but don't think these decks all of a sudden become amazing and new overnight. 
Sometimes people will follow the OCG, but then sometimes it doesn't adapt as well to the TCG. And there's always that creative player that, have, that has done deck building that put this one little bit of tech in the deck and makes the deck broken and everyone else follows suit. Now, that is where the creativity of deck building comes into it. The, the ability to kind of put a story together in a deck yourself, the ability to kind of put cards together, see the synergy, see the combos, work on combos, everything within deck building that kind of synergizes together brings it to the forefront, makes it better, makes it, gives you more to do. Uh, and I think you're more invested in a deck that you have personally built than a deck that you've just net decked. And every deck, in my opinion, should work differently for different players because they all have different play styles. You can net deck the number one deck in the world right now and you probably won't do as well with it as you might think. Like, don't think because I've got the number one deck I'm going to instantly win because the play style of that number one deck might not match you. And that's where deck building, deck testing, and just overall deck construction and creativity come into play. Uh, and that's one thing that I am really jealous of Joe for, because Joe just has this creative mind. Sometimes it's, it's back crazy, and I'm like, really? Like, you're really going to do that? But then there's sometimes when he'll just he'll pull some spark out of nowhere, and I'm like, yeah, that works. Now, what I mean by that, he's not pulling sparks at like, this is the new biggest meta trend. But he'll pull out sparks like, okay, so for this fun deck, I can actually get a very nice angle with it. Uh, and I, I think that's the one beautiful thing about Yu-Gi-Oh! Is, is just being able to debt build, being able to be creative, kind of just letting loose of the chains and just going for it. Uh, and I think that's absolutely amazing. So now we're going to move into some honourable mentions. And these are just like little bits that when you do it, you're like, oh, yes, love it. So we're looking at stuff like shuffling with fresh sleeves. Now, again, plus and downside to that, when you shuffle with fresh sleeves, it just feels so good. Just The car just moving through the... Uh, freely through each other as like the water and just flowing and nicely and then obviously you've got the downside as if if you slip they'll go everywhere. Uh, the adverts. Now I don't know about you but if you've ever seen an OCG or even a TCG advert we don't get them as much now because obviously they're, they're more designed for like children's TV but the adverts are always amazing they're always like CG versions of the blue eyes or whatever the main core card is coming to life and then it shows you the cards in the advert and it's just oh really good high value absolutely love it. Uh, creative inspiration, I think this kind of just builds off of everything. Whether it be creative inspiration to uh, create full arts of cards, whether it be creative inspiration to create your own cards, proxy cards, creativity to build a story behind. Like if you don't know the lore of a certain art type, but you want to try and thread the cards together, you build your own story. You're creative in that aspect. If you want to put a spicy tech in a deck and you want to be creative that way, you can do. And I think there's no real restrictions on how creative you can be. And allowing your ambitions to kind of flourish. And again, I think that's another amazing aspect that you just absolutely have to love about Yu-Gi-Oh! So now we move on to my number one. Now, the number one is probably the most important, the, the best thing you can love it. And again, it's kind of like Marmite. Now, for the American people watching this, Marmite is kind of like this spread that we put on some of our stuff that's like, you either love it or you hate it. Now, number one is the people. Now, what I mean by the people, I'm talking about the people you play with, the friends you make, the, the duels that you end up having, whether it be a random stranger that you're facing at a locals, whether it be a close friend, whether it be a random stranger that turns into your close friend, I know for sure that the interactions I have had throughout Yu-Gi-Oh! with people has been absolutely unreal, and I probably wouldn't have half the friends I've got if it wasn't for Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, and not to mention that as well, you've got fans and followings, and even influencers like your Team Samurais, like your Trift Gaming, the right influencers, and I'm not saying everyone, but the right influencers can actually be very, very inspirational. And this is why they're called influencers. Stuff like Farfa as well, where, you know, you'll get home from hard days where you'll watch one of their videos and you'll be like, I feel better now. Or you'll watch Triff or you'll see one of Triff's posts on social media and you're just like, thanks man, I've had a really down day, it's really pumped me up. And as much as you can get, like, grinded by Team Samurai, he's an evil genius. He's an e absolute evil genius. Now... What I mean by that is, I think he was one of the first yu gi -Chus to ever put best. And he, he's kind of used that as an adaption on himself, that he knows the deck isn't the best. But he still gets the views for it, he'll still get the accolades for it as well. And his enthusiasm, along with Simo, along with MBT, like the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Just, it brings so much together and, you know, at the end of the day, if that content creator has providing inspiration for an individual out there, if they have helped um, inspire them for a tough time or anything like that, you know, they, they deserve all the accolades they get. So whether it be just friends you've made, whether it be people you face, whether it just be the random stranger that you've gone, hey, can you help me with my deck or can you have a look at my deck or, I remember when I started off, there was I, I was new to the game, I knew someone that um, 
that had built the same deck as me, and I was like, can you just help me out with my build? My build's a little bit, I don't know. And this was a good few years back. Uh, he helped me with the build, and I ironically ended up facing him round one. He did kick my ass because he knew exactly what was in my deck. Um, but even then, like the interactions between the two, it, it just helps you build friends, it helps you interact. You know, and one of the biggest uh, and most satisfying things for myself as well as a content creator, and of course the rest of the team as well, is when we receive positive comments from you guys, or even when we get comments challenging us in a, in a positive way. So, like, we get a lot of comments that go, you know, what do you think of this deck? We're more than happy to help out. But we also get comments that are like, hey, have you tried this card in this build? Or have you tried this in this? Or why don't you play this? Like, they're all absolutely fine because that helps us learn as well. And it also helps us provide, um, like, adaptions for yourselves as well and go, that's actually a good idea. Or, now, the reason I don't like it is because it doesn't personally fit my playstyle, but you're more than welcome to do so. And I think just the overall interaction, the overall community, the overall people, no matter what part of you go you are, um, put out good karma, get good karma about this is the way I see it. And at the end of the day, um, you go as a community, at the end of the day, is going to have more positive people than negative people. Uh, and this is a passion. This is a hobby that every one of us, especially every one of us watching this video, whether it be Yu-Gi-Oh, whether it be Magic, whether it be whatever, any type of card game, you absolutely love it, you have a passion for it, and the community comes together, and I think at the end of the day, that's one thing that is so unique that I pride above everything else, is just the pure love of the community, uh, that if you've got a question, you might get 10 little trolley answers, you might get one answer that answers everything you need. So that's one thing that I highly praise the community for. Uh, it's the one thing that I love about Yu-Gi-Oh! the most is the people in general, to be able to make friends, to make new communities. Like I've, I've met loads of new people just doing the extravaganza. I've, I've learned loads of new stuff as well. So always happy for that. So with all of my blabber out of the way, I hope you agree with this list. Again, it's, it's just down to personal opinion. If there's anything that you particularly like about Yu-Gi-Oh! that you want to share with me, by all means, do so. So, I've now got all of your comments. Now, all of your comments, I'm going to try and go through. I've got loads, so thanks to every single one of you that sent them in. Some are a little bit, I specifically love an individual from Yu-Gi-Oh! And some have been, I specifically love this about Yu-Gi-Oh! So, we got B. Dubsky, deck building. Completely agree. Uh, Center, you cry. Uh, the simplistic rules that allow for anyone to just pick up the game and enjoy it. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> That's Cards Against Humanity. Uh, I'll change my answer to Dark Magician Girls or Harpy Ladies. So I thought that was quite funny. Uh, the rules can be quite convoluted and quite um, confusing. But one thing again that Yu-Gi-Oh does is, if you actually look back at it, there's a range of decks that allow different levels of player to get into it. So when someone said to me, oh, I'm getting back into the game, what should I pick up? Like I used to go, right, go for Salaman Greats if you want to learn the, the new Link mechanic. Go for Shadows if you want to learn if you want to keep it basic and just do um, fusion summons and you've also got if you don't want to go with the extra at all go with sacred beast because you've got obviously got the legacy of the uh, technical god cards as well uh, we've then got peacekeeper 11.5 or 115 the diversity of art types and how well some synergize also dream mirrors can't disagree with dream mirrors like the artwork is stunning dark slayer 289 that's some of my favorite monsters got full art type support I mean, I can't argue with that. Like, at the end of the day, if we only had a Dark Magician and it never got more support, you'd still love it, but then that moment it gets new support, you're like... like I, think, I think that's one good thing as well that I didn't really mention, is when a, when a deck or a card that you like gets more support, even if the support is total ass, you still love it. Um, Tim Coleman, definitely the price of Dragon <laughs> Uh, I'm not even going to go into the prices on that one, that's just slightly depressing. I suppose one positive thing about prices is when you get a card that's like way undervalued in like a bid on eBay. Uh, Lewis Hassel, making creative decks with underused cards and art types and also waifu cards. So for those of you watching that don't know what waifu cards are, they're basically like Dark Magician Girl. You've got Husbando cards as well, Donald will probably correct me on that. But it's basically like it, when you particularly love a, a particular female card or a male card. Uh, Adrian Brunner, law art types, specifically Ritual Beast. Ritual Beast Tamer Lara equals best girl. So you've got a bit of a waifu love on that one as well. Um, Senor Israel. Uh, the connection it allows me to form. Nothing beats getting together with friends and having a great time with some cardboard. I can't argue with that. Like That pretty much epitomizes why Yu-Gi-Oh! is loved so much. Uh, scanned it. The card art and the variation of deck play styles such as Grim Manju, which is obviously second shot OTK, Mech Knights and Zodiac. Uh, Darcy tells. I love the variety of decks, archetypes that can be made. I love that they're always changing and evolving. I love that there are so many content creators out there now allowing us, mul um, us to access multiple opinions. That's a great thing. Uh, Mr. Mimikyu, the Neos archetype. I, I can't disagree with Neos archetype. The only thing that annoys me about the Neos archetype is where is my reprint of the Hummingbird? Like, bro, come on, we've been waiting for Air Neos for ages. 
Uh, Metal and Marvel, waifu cards because he's unloved. Don't worry, Mar Metal and Marvel, we love you. Um, Thomas Adams, like-minded people and seeing how people build their decks differently. Agreed. Uh, Daniel Menson, the Lost Arts. I can't disagree with that. Some Lost Arts make me go, really? Why is that even censored? Um, but again, the one thing about this is if you're having a really bad day, go and watch a video that is literally um, Yu-Gi-Oh! anime censored. It'll just make you laugh. Like when Kyber's sitting there going, don't do anything, Pegasus. It's like, it just oh, it makes me laugh. Decap99, the card art and the way you can build decks. Thomas Patterson, Combo Go Brrr <laughs> and Ritual Beasts. Uh, Comic Tamer, specifically, My Kajuka or My Valentine. I mean, can't lie, when you're a kid and you see My Valentine, you're kind of like, uh. uh user One Raf, Ultimate Res. I, I'm personally a Ghost fan, but you can't go wrong with Ultimate Res. Uh, that One Trainer, Magician Girls. Uh, Simon, he says, uh, Malice, Mal Malaverse? I'm assuming it's miscellaneous, which if it is, fair enough, if you, if you love miscellaneous. I mean, if you play dinos, there's no greater love than miscellaneous. Like, miscellaneous is... I mean, Soli and the Overactor is an amazing card, but, like, when you're playing that and your opponent's like, okay, I'm going to do something, you go, miscellaneous? Like, that to me is beyond. Absolutely love that card. Uh, so I'm just trying to pick up the rest of the comments now, because, again, like I said, you guys sent in quite a lot. So I want to make sure I don't miss anyone out. Uh, um, and I think... Da -da -da -da, that's pretty much everyone. I think the last one I've got is, got is from Gabriel Paulson. And he just says that he has a skill he hasn't found anyone else with. And the ability to make a good enough uh, a good deck for locals without all of the pieces. I.e. winning with heroes with no Faris, increase Malicious Bane, a Dusty Gold, Liquid Soldier, Sunrise, and one Fusion Destiny, two Strats, and two Equal. It's quite impressive. I mean, that is one feeling that you'll always get, like, like a feeling of pure love, is when you beat a meta player with an unregistered meta road deck. Like, that feeling, to me, is beyond anything else, because I really don't like mirror matches. So when I'm able to go, uh, play this road deck, and my opponent's like, what does it do? I go, ah, uh, it wins. Anyway, <laughs> that's it. Something a little bit more light-hearted, something a little bit more around love, and, and just being able for us to give back to you guys at home. I was going to do, like, a Dark Magician Girl build, I could do that anytime. I think a, a video like this, just for me to show you appreciation, a video that I've never seen done. I've never seen anyone go, these are the five things I love about you, and just kind of spreading the love on Valentine's Day as well. Um, and we'll probably try, I, I don't know how you can spread Easter. Like, do we just make an egg deck? Like a scrambled egg deck? But uh, yeah, we'll go with that. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. As absolutely always, guys, please smash that like button, hit that notification bell, and subscribe. You show support to the channel. We love it. We appreciate you. We are doing this out of passion, and we just want to kind of hit the targets that we are aiming for as well. I'd love to get 17,000 by the end of this month, and I am aiming to get 20,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Keep it coming, guys. We absolutely love you. We appreciate it. Uh, and so for every single one of us here at Zephyr War Games, we love you. Do not worry. Metal and Marvel, you are not unloved, okay? No one is unloved in this world. We love you all equally. But for now, as absolutely always, guys, stay safe and happy dueling.